Hey, this is Seth from Drone DJ, and today I'm here with our resident cinematographer, George Michael, here to talk about the DJI Mavic 3. A little word cine on the side? I think that's why they brought me in. We're gonna get to talking about all the features and specs coming out in this new drone, but first, we gotta show you some footage. DJI has been releasing a bunch of new products. A new action camera, a new array of microphones, a new cinema camera, and now a pair of new drones, the Mavic 3 Cine and the Mavic 3. So what's new in these ones? There's a number of features in this targeted at cinematographers, and also a lot of features that aren't that different from the standard edition of the Mavic 3. Let's talk about the improvements across both editions of the drone. First and foremost is the larger sensor. We have a four-thirds size sensor in the Mavic 3 drone. Bigger sensor is going to be better quality images, better low light performance, better noise performance. Getting that sensor size up brings the image closer to that of a professional camera and farther away from that of the camera in your pocket in your phone. Maybe our favorite small change, this new startup sound. We've got improved omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, a 28x zoom capability, which does have a ridiculous ability to zoom in, but not at a great resolution. And a 46 minute flight time up from the 31 minutes on the last Mavic 2 Pro drone. The Cine package comes with a built-in screen having remote controller. It's actually running Android on this screen. You just tap the DJI Fly app, and that's the way you're launching from here versus having to plug your phone in. This is a welcome addition and something that when you're running stuff on set, you don't want to have your phone be integral to make the system work because you need it for other things while working on production. Resolution-wise, we can get up to 5.1K at 50 frames per second, and in the slow-mo category, we can get 4K 120 FPS. In terms of codec, we finally have ProRes in the Mavic line. Super important for cinematographers, super important for people who want the highest quality video. H.265 was a welcome improvement over H.264, but ProRes is just an industry standard. It's a codec, it's a video file type created by Apple, and it being in these drones just unlocks a way easier post workflow. Side by side, zoomed in, you can tell the difference between ProRes and H.264 or 5, especially in banding and situations with high dynamic range, a lot of different colors, darks and lights. And in terms of editing, machines can handle ProRes a lot better. It's no surprise that Apple computers can handle the Apple codec a lot more efficiently than they can H.265. Another Cine only feature is the one terabyte SSD that's inside the drone itself. You can add an SD card on top of that and storage capacity wise, you can easily have a two terabyte data capable drone flying around. It's great to not have to fuddle with SD cards, but you still do need to plug the drone in somewhere. It's not a removable SSD, which is what I think would be even better. The package comes with a two-in-one capable bag. You can carry it as sort of a more briefcase style bag, and it can also be a backpack. Converting it is relatively quick, and it now opens you for storage on the top part of the bag for your other camera or other smaller drones you want to fit in there. 
This bundle also comes with a set of MD filters, which were a lot easier to change out than the previous versions of changing out the front facing element to get more of an MD attached to the face of the camera, due in no small part to how much larger this camera array is for you to get your fingers onto it and twist and replace those pieces. It's also got a significantly increased range to go along with that longer battery life, so you can fly a little farther as you're also able to fly for a little longer. So that's all the stuff on paper, but what were our actual experiences? Overall, flying the drone with this new remote is great. Both me and Seth immediately remarked, this screen is so nice. And it is not just nice to get your phone in your pocket and be able to fly, but it is nice to have a high quality resolution screen built into that controller. It just feels a little more professional and it's meant to do so. The runtime, we didn't exactly push it to get 46 minutes, and that is gonna depend on which mode you're in, how fast you're flying, and I assume at what data rate you're recording. I'm not sure how much that impacts it, but we did notice a longer flight time in general. It was the kind of thing that you were flying around and checked your battery percentage and went, oh, I still have 50% battery. Oh, I still have 60% battery. And it was more noticeable that way versus measuring it exactly how long is this lasting. Comparing size and weight, it's no surprise that this is heavier than something like the Air 2S, but it is lighter than the Mavic 2 Pro, although it is slightly bigger. Its footprint feels a little bit more similar to the original Mavic, but it's not as heavy, nor are the batteries as heavy, so it makes the whole experience it's just a little bit larger to fit in a backpack, but when you're using the backpack designed for it, it fits right in, to no surprise. At time of recording, the master shot and 4K 120 frames per second options were not available. DJI have told us those will be coming in a launch day firmware update. That 4K 120 frames per second is a feature that I'm most excited to get to use, and having it in ProRes in a drone of this size is just a leap forward, it feels like. This thing does also just take, you know, pictures, not ones that are moving. It is the cinema version, but it does have the photo capabilities, and they are really, really nice images that are taken out of this thing. It's got all the features I want as a cinematographer in the easiest to use package I've used from DJI. It's a lot of stuff that people who are camera people first and are drone enthusiasts or drone users second have been asking for when it comes to professional features. ProRes, a longer battery life, better built-in storage options, but to justify the Cine over the Mavic 3 is gonna be a hard decision for a lot of people. H.264 looks really good for a lot of content, especially if it's only going to be watched on the web. I noticed the ProRes stuff, but maybe the viewer doesn't, and it hurts me to say, but I'm not sure how to justify the $3,000 price increase for getting ProRes, having an internal SSD, and getting the remote control to come with it. I think this one is more suited towards small production companies who do want to get into professional drone work and not so much owner operators who use things for web content or for smaller level productions. H.264, a good set of NDs, and knowing how to compose your shots is going to do a lot of the work for you. And for the price of the Mavic 3 Cine, you can just get the regular Mavic 3 and get a bunch of other things that are important like a microphone and a regular camera, maybe the new action from DJI or DJI's new mic system. You can get those types of things and have a more well-rounded production capability versus dropping a lot of money just on a cinema-friendly drone. This feels like something that's a little more on the high-end side of things and it does a good job of being a small size, high-end product. There's a few things I wish we were seeing that would just take it that extra level. I wish the SSD was removable instead of having to plug in the drone. It would be sweet if I was able to take a CFast card and put it into the back of the drone so I had a high quality recording format, but I was able to swap them out and hand them off to a DIT or someone that was assisting me to download that footage while I put a new memory stick in and get back in the air. I also wish the NDs were built in. DJI has other systems like the Ronin 4D that do have built-in ND filters, and those are gonna help us get the kinds of exposures we want without having to bring the drone down depending on how the light is changing. When I was flying at sunset, I had to bring the drone down to swap from a ND4 to a clear ND just so I can get that last 20 minutes of sunset where I don't need to reduce the amount of light hitting my sensor. Those little things would take it just that farther bit to make it feel like a no-brainer for cinema professionals to upgrade. 
And the other small thing I'd like to see is how we change these things. These little joysticks are great that they're able to be stored in the back here, but my cold fingers when I'm flying, even just in fall, have a hard time taking things out and screwing them in. It's just a little frustrating. I do wish there was a way that you could disengage the joystick and it folded into the side here or some other solution that was just a little less fuddly when I wanted to get up and into the air quickly. So that's first look, that's first impressions, that's first footage with the Mavic 3 Cine from DJI. I've been George Michael walking you around my experiences with it, which have been relatively positive and also a lot of fun. So do appreciate you checking this out. If you're disappointed in this drone, you should also let us know in the comments below what would make this more of a cinema professional's drone. Be sure to subscribe to Drone DJ and like this video. Thanks for watching.